definitely appreciate all the all the support. We've got three great great talks for you tonight. We've got um, talks from Black Sesame, from Databricks, and from Uber. So I, I won't delay any further. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Stephen Tang from Black Sesame. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I actually I was officially notified to give this talk yesterday. So <laughs> because the original speaker has an urgent schedule conflicts, so I did not have enough time to prepare prepare well for this talk. Uh, but anyway, I will try my best. Uh, okay. Good evening. My name is Steve, Steven Du from Black Sesame Technologies. Uh, this is a startup company in the area of, uh, of autonomous, autonomous driving. In this talk, we will discuss data driving, data driving development in the autonomous driving. <coughs> For this talk, I'm very happy to share our experience of doing a proof of a concept project, which is named as the Assistant Vehicle Parking. At the beginning, sorry, I'm sorry. Microphone, please. Yeah. <clears throat> At the beginning, we will go over we will go over some details of these projects to certain extent. But due to the time limitation and the company policy, we cannot dig too much into it. Uh, then we will discuss a little bit on a case study of localization. <coughs> After that, I will show you uh, our AVP demo. The assistant vehicle parking means that when you arrive at the garage, you will leave the vehicle and the vehicle will drive autonomously to the, to the assigned parking space. Uh, this, is a, this is a big project, so we split, split this project into four modules. The first, the first one and the most important and challenging one is the localization module. It, this module locates the real-time position for the vehicle, and it will send the post information of the vehicle to the past to the past planning module. Okay. So, uh, the second module is the perception module. This this module module is to detect moving objects like persons and other vehicles. Uh, it will analyze or predict the behaviors of the detected objects and send the results to the bus planning module. In addition, it is also used to detect to detect landmarks. The landmarks are used to connect accumulate, accumulative errors of localization, in which way we can guarantee that the localization error will be constrained in a small range. The function for the bus planning module includes creating a 2D, a 2D map. Uh, this map uh, the, this map includes the static objects in in the garage, like the loads, pillars, or doors. Uh, typically, this this map is created as the as these objects won't move. So uh, it also need to it also actually the main the main function for this part is to generate to generate a drivable path, which is based on the given map along with the receive detection results. Finally, the, can, the control model is designed to send commands to the vehicle so that the vehicle will follow the, follow the given path. Uh, now, let's go over the hard, hardware setup for these projects. When we talk about localization, the first thing that comes, comes into our mind is the GPS. The GPS is able to provide the absolute position while most, while most other localization solutions can only provide relative positions. So the accumulative error is a big issue for other solutions. Since our project, since our AVP project is targeted, is targeted to be applied in the underground on the, on the garages, so we cannot use the GPS. The GPS device, and uh, we since we target to provide a low cost, low cost AVP system, so we cannot use a high precision devices like the lidar or expensive IMU. But the chip, I'm, 
but the chip device IMU is easy to shift and the signal is not stable. So we propose a pure we propose a pure vision solution. In this solution, in this solution we only use two RGB RGBD cameras. The, the DSS the DSS the DSS D four thirty five. This camera can provide both an RGB RGB image and a corresponding depth information of the objects within his range. Uh, one of the cam one of this camera is in front is is installed in, uh, in front of the of this vehicle and the other one is installed uh, at the back of this vehicle. <coughs> And uh, we run we run our codes in in Nvidia in Nvidia Devia and the text TX2, and the testing the testing vehicle is a Inno Commander. Uh, the algorithms were deployed in our U.S. office while they were tested in Shanghai or China. Uh, here I only briefly introduce the algorithms we use for each module. The localization algorithm, the localization algorithm is based on SLAM. So the input of this algorithm are RGB image and uh, and the depth the depth image from the camera. The algorithm will use will use this input to output camera post information and at the same time it will create a point cloud map and this map will be installed at the data center. This uh, this point point cloud map can be used for localization in in later usage. The this uh, this figure uh, this figure shows the basis of of visual automatry. Suppose that suppose that the physical the physical feature in the three words like this one in the P P T here. Uh, we suppose that the feature is is static. Then when we move the camera, when we move the camera from this, the previous time to current time, then we will we will see this pro this feature, this feature will be project to the image image space like this, in the pixel level like this one. And when we move the camera, we will get another pixel in the image. When we when we have a um, more than I think more than five, uh, in theory, if we have more than five feature points, we can we can calculate the the rotation and translation of for the camera. Since the camera is installed in the vehicle, so it it uh, denotes the movement for the vehicle. Uh, the perception model is based on the Neural networks. Uh, I think I think everyone should be familiar with the deep learning. So I did not uh, put the put the structure figure for the deep learning uh, for the neural networks. We only uh, this uh, figure here. The the perception the perception model will first detect the objects like. The, like that in this in this figure, <coughs> and then it will combine the depth information. You know, as I just said, the depth the depth information is from the DSS camera. So with with this, we can we can output a relative positions of the detected objects, and uh, and then send this information to the past planning module. Then the past planning will make a decision, and send some some their decision to to the control parts. The past planning, the past planning is based on RRT, and uh, every time when it receives this detection results, it will update the state static two D map. As I just said, we we will be create two D maps, but this, but the objects in these two D maps are static. So when the perception model detects some moving objects like the people or other vehicles, it will it will update it will update a uh, uh, a map and then with a start point and the end point the RT algorithm will output a smooth path so that the, the vehicle can follow this path to drive to the designed area. <coughs> uh, 
uh, as the algorithms uh, we were developed in our US office, why they were they were mainly tested in China, we could not see the testing performance directly to speed up the testing and debugging process. We designed a visualization tool. This tool was built was built in cloud so that the both US team and the Shanghai team can upload their data into it. Then the, the tool will be able to visualize the connected data. Mm -hmm. Uh, this tool can help us debug both the over the overall testing performance and the performance of of each module. As show as shown in this figure, uh, the gray this one the gray line maybe that is not obvious. The gray line here denotes the trajectory that the vehicle has already drive driven, and the blue line denotes the the path. The plant pass, the the plant pass, and the the red area denotes the, denotes the area that we, the vehicle is not allowed to pass, uh, like the parking space. And we also visualize the capture images from the camera. Like this is this is a this is the image from the front camera, and this is the image from the from the back camera. With this tool. With this tool, it's easy for us to easy for us to check and uh, analyze the performance of the of the perception and past planning modules. We can easily check whether the path, the planned path is legible or not. Like for example, in this one, if the planned path, the plan path is, looks like this, no, we then we know the output is not legible. But for this one, it looks good, <coughs> and uh, we can also. <coughs> We can also check the, whether the detection result is correct or not. Uh, for example, from this from this front camera, we we see there is a car here. So the visualize to show that there is a car here. <coughs> uh, however, when it comes to checking the localization performance, the common way is to compare the results with some ground truth like the result from LiDAR. But since we since we are a startup company, the resource is limited, and this just to say we can't we don't have the ladder. So we come up with uh, some different ways to check his accuracy. The first one is to check, like for example, for this one. Uh, the first one is to check whether the localization result comes comes back to his knowledge after we physically drive this vehicle in our last cycle. The second one is to is to align the change. Another one. This one works. Make sure it's on. Turn it, you need to turn it on. Oh, it was on last time I used it. Just get another one. There's another two. You're so well prepared. <laughs> Let's try this one. Uh, uh, this one doesn't show on. No. Oh, half. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. I'm sorry. So uh, the second one is to, to align the trajectory into the Google map. Like for this, we we can we can see what is the, this trajectory is on the road. As we know, we drive we drive this car al along this 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 smaller nose. And we can also we can also uh, when when we detect when we detect some landmarks, we can also check the difference between the localization results and the position computed based on the landmarks. Since the landmarks is is some static objects we already included in the map. So when we detect some landmarks, we know their coordinators and the, the perception model will output the relative positions. Based on this, we can compute a, a position results with a position result in the map coordinates. So before the connectedness of the accumulative error, we can compare the localization result, localization result with these computed results. So we can also 
Based, based on this completion, we can also get a metric for the error performance. And uh, we can also check whether the transaction follows the plan path or not. Like for, exam like for example, in this slide, we know the plan path in this way. We, we can check whether the vehicle follows this, this path. <coughs> Uh, when developing this project, the main challenges are, are as follows. In the organization level, the localization algorithm is sensitive when the extracted feature, feature number is limited. So when the camera is faced with a white wall, like in here, lots of the area are the, are the white walls. And, uh, and we know the white walls are very common in on the glass. So the, pro the performance of the localization model compromised, and uh, when the, and and also when the glass lighting condition changes, the accuracy also goes down. It's very hard to improve the performance, the localization performance, while purely while purely improving the algorithm in this in this area. The the device. The device level is that this part is not controllable, and the and the depth the depth information uh, the depth information in our project is obtained from uh, via the active infrared light light. When the temperature or the humid condition changes, the depth information the depth information also changes. And the last thing is a human being level. As I said, the resource in our company is limited, and the developing and developing and the testing process processes are split into different locations, which increase the cost of communications, and it also slows, slows down the develop, development speed. Uh, this is a case study for the localization error. Uh, when we when we test the develop 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 the algorithms, we found that the over the overall performance for the localization model is pretty good. But there exists certain specific areas in the graph where the tracking loss chance is is very large, and it's easy to drift away for the localization results. Thus, we paid more attention to study the failure. The failure cases. We focus on starting the feature extraction and the matching processing in this area. As shown, as shown in these two in these figures, the algorithm can extract hundreds of features, like, like in this this one. But most of these these features are useless. Only a small <coughs> portion of it can be used for for the. For the localization uh, of reasons, so we so we studied the distribution of this of this uh, the distribution of these useful features and proposed a simple way to patch the impact environment environment to increase the robustness and the accuracy. This is a this is a figure from our paper. Uh, when we test when we test the result, we drive the we move the camera along the along this trajectory. We we have, we can find out so, uh, there are some places are very important to include to improve the the localization performance. So we studied the distribution where we should put the where we should put the poster or to patch the environment. To increase the, to increase the localization results. So, like for this example, without this poster, without this poster, it's easy to get lost. But with with a simple change of the environment, <coughs> we get this smooth localization results. Uh, this is a com compari comparison of our localization solution with the with the state of the art solution. We compared, uh, actually we compared uh, our solution with some others, but on, we only list the two of the, the this one is the sort of future and the sort of wastelands. We know uh, 
the only uh, as I just said, the only sensor for our solution is, is the camera, and for the set of future is the camera and the IMU. Actually, in, in their solution, this, um, this IMU is very expensive. For cheap, for cheap, for cheap IMU, the performance will compromise. But but for the sort of we sams, it also just use use one camera, uh, and we I need to mention that we you actually we use two cameras. Okay. <coughs> The translation error for our solution is less than half percentage, while the SOTA is along two percentage, and the SOTA wisdom is similar as, as us, as ours. The, loca the location shift, we also study the lo location shift. For our solution, uh, we tested <coughs> for 50 times, but, and we did not find the shift. The location shift. The location, the location shift means that when we, when the vehicle stop here, but the localization is not sort it was it was moving and then fly away. And for this one there, when test 50, 50 times of it, we found there are more than, there are more than 20 times to shift away. But for the for this one it's also very stable. The 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 accumulative error for, uh, for, as I mentioned in at the beginning, we used the, we proposed to use the landmarks to connect the accumulative error. So we can guarantee that the, the error, the error for the localization result is less than 20 centimeters, no matter how long we drive these vehicles. But for these two, they, they have no, uh, they have no me mechanism to cancel the accumulative errors. So, as we drive, drive the vehicle for a long time, then the, the error will increase more and more. The, <coughs> the checking loss chance for hours is, is also zero. Uh, we did not find it, but maybe it will, it will lose chance for some specific, for some specific uh, situation. Like, like for example, if we put our hands to cover the to cover the camera, then it will it, it will lose the tracking. But but it, normally for the SOTA and this one, we we also found some some <coughs> tracking loss. The the frequency of the of the localization is that denotes the computation the computation cost. We uh, when we run our algorithm on the TX2, the frequency for this is 11 hertz. And uh, when, if we run it with the NVIDIA, the, wheel, the, the frequency for this can be, uh, can be around 30, 30 hertz. And uh, for the sort of fusion, it, it is 10 and 15 respect, uh, 10 and 15 respectively. And for, uh, when, when we talk about SLAM, uh, we, we know the initialization process is very important. For our, for our solution, it's easy to initialize. That to say, when we open, when we run the system, then it can work immediately. But for this one, it's very hard. And uh, there are some other SLAM solutions that requires the, uh, requires, uh, requires the, the local to, to move and rotate. But for our but for the solution is installed in the in the vehicle, we cannot ask the vehicle to at the beginning to move like this. Uh, the goal for our localization part is 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 only to put a stable and accurate local accurate stable and accurate local localization solution in the indoor environment. And uh, we actually we achieved that the, <coughs> the localization error for in for our solution is less than one percentage for each chip. Actually since we introduced the me mechanism to cancel the accumulative error. So we if we long more than two more than two or three chips the localization error is also Stays the, stays the same. And, uh, but, and this, 
one thing uh, we need to mention that the, the, this this result is a little bit better than that in in Shanghai. That's because we I just said that uh, the depth information is can be affected by the by the temperature and the humid and the humid conditions. So in this area, we know the water is always dry. So the depth information are always good. But in Shanghai, the humid conditions change a lot. The total the total localization loss rate for us is less than one percentage. And actually we we did not find it in five minutes. Oh okay. Five minutes? Until Q and A. Okay. Uh, actually uh, all these achievements are based on conditions. Our solution is not universal. We there are some constraints. All, all these achievements are based on these conditions, like we ask the vehicles to move move slowly and uh, the lighting condition won't change. That to say in the in the underground garage we there's nobody to turn turn on and turn off lights. And uh, and also we need we need some sign and pillars. The side and the pillars are actually the landmarks. We will use this landmark to cancel the accumulative error. And the localization features are defined. If there's there is no in there, if the environment is very simple, we need to put some some poster to increase the features. And uh, we also our solution also <coughs> depends on the accuracy of the of depth information because the depth depth information is only obtained from the near sense camera. We cannot control it. Uh, this is the innovation for our project. We we propose to use two cameras uh, to to increase the, to improve the accuracy of the stability. And since the time is not enough, I don't do it one one by one. So and also we we you we propose to use use landmarks to connect to connect accumulative errors and uh, most. And uh, and finally, we also propose a patch strategy to change the physical environment because it is uh, relatively relative simple when it compares to increase to uh, improve the oxygen itself. So for up doing this project, we sub we submit two academic papers and we also apply returning patents. These patents are still in progress. Uh, this is a figure for the commits of commits of the codes for each week. Actually, we use half year to do this project. Uh, since uh, there's no enough time, I show a demo for this project. This is the, the point cloud map. Actually, this, this point cloud map is generated in US, and in the following, the, test, the testing cloud is in Shanghai. So the, this map is different from the cloud. I just show that we can, we can uh, generate a, we can generate a point cloud map so that we can use it. When the vehicle when the vehicle is running, the perception will will detect the, the objects and make his decisions. And in the following, you will see there will be a car to move in front of this vehicle, and it will just slow down because the car is a, a, little, bit, a little bit far away. And we know for the localization uh, of the, we know the localization result is is only obtained from from the images. So even with the <coughs> camera doesn't move, if the objects move like this, the operator will saw the camera move like this. But you see, from this video, there is a car in front of it. But uh, our 
the cheat vehicle can still follow the path. <laughs> yeah, this is a, the visualization tool we, we designed for this, for this project. Uh, actually, we, we also have our online version for the visualization tool. We can just take a look at this. <coughs> like uh, when the when the vehicle is that this? So in, the, in this online online version for this uh, for this project, uh, the online tool can visualize the images we see, the, the front and the back, and we also have the the direction the direction of these vehicles, and this is the speed information for the vehicle, and uh, they are also visualize the the, the perception detection results. So the time is up now. Yeah, but okay. we, we do have we do have a couple of minutes for questions. So um, thank you so much for coming. I know your colleague is scheduled to so If there are any questions, please go ahead and ask Dr. Tu, and then we have the next speaker come up and set up the slides. I would come around with a microphone, but I don't have one, so just be loud. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I, I know this project is is not perfect so far because this is only.